Hi everyone. So today I will be talking about the ROC and AOC numericals that you're supposed to solve. So an ROC curve basically is the curve between the true positive rate and the false positive rate of any algorithm that I take up. So maybe I have a classifier and I want to judge. I have different classifiers and I want to find out which classifier is performing the best. So ROC curve is used for that. So you can see here, here what happens is that any classifier which gives me a better area is a better classifier. So that is basically the AUC, which is the area under the curve. The ROC curve is my AOC. Uh, let's get to the numerical. So suppose I have the posterior probabilities given to me for a particular classifier that I have. So I have these values given to me and the predictive class will depend on the threshold that I choose amongst this and the true classes are here. So suppose I take a threshold of 0.76 Anything above and equal to 0.76 will give me a positive value and anything below this will give me a negative value in the predicted class. So while trying to determine the threshold, what we do is that we try and plot the ROC curve. Now let's see what we do. So here I have the classes, the true classes that I have here. Now all these probabilities that I have, I will put them in an ascending order here. So I start with the smallest and I go up to the highest. And what I do is that I try and calculate for every threshold the number of true positives, the number of false positives, the number of true negatives and the number of false negatives. So let's start with 0.19. If my threshold is this, then anything equal to 0.19 and above this will be positive. So all these predictive classes will be positive. So number of true positives that I have, so the actual present true positives, I have six values of true positives here. So these six will come here as true positives and the number of false positives would be four because these four negative values will be misclassified as positive. So I will have four false positives, true negatives, true no, uh, false negatives will be zero. Just to reiterate, true positives are the values which are actually positive and are predicted to be positive. False positives are the ones which are actually negative but are predicted as positive. So something like this. A true negative is when I have a negative and it is predicted like a negative, then it's a true negative. A false negative is when I have a positive, but it is now showing me a negative value. So a positive shown as a negative is a false negative. Uh, the TPR and the FNR, so that's the true positive rate. You have this formula TP upon TP plus FN is your TPR and your false positive rate is the false positive upon false positive plus true negative. So I have to find out TPR and FPR using all these values which is easily possible using the simple mathematics here. Now when my threshold is this, I find out this value. Now let's take the threshold as 0.25. So anything above this, all these values will be positive and only this will be classified as negative. Again you will find out the number of true positive, false positive, true negative and false negative. Now, to be able to do this easily, there is a very easy mechanism. You will notice that when I come here, so if I have, I will look at the previous class. If it is negative, what I will simply do is, whatever my true positive is, whatever my false negative is, I will retain it as same. So this will remain 6 and this will remain 0. Now, the previous one was negative. So I will just increase the true negative here by 1 and decrease the false positive by 1. So that my total is still 10 values that I have. Similarly, when I come to this, I could do either of the two. So 0 0.543, I could put in all the positive values here and try and find out the true positive, false positive, true negative and false negative. Otherwise, what I will do simply do is, I will look at the previous value here. This was positive. So whenever I get a positive value here in the previous class, then I will decrease the true positive by 1, increase the false negative by 1 and keep the false positive and true negative the same. Similarly, when I come here, this was negative. So I simply decrease this by 1, increase the true negative by 1 and leave these two untouched. So I will keep repeating this with the previous class or like I reiterate, you could again do it manually by just as you are kind of visualizing that all these are positives and try to find out the values of true positive, false positive, true negative and false negative. 
Once this is done, I have all these values. The next step is to find out the TPR value and the FPR value using these formula here. I will be getting these values. Now I could simply plot these values. So here I have plotted these values also. So I have taken the true positive rate over here and the false positive rate to be here. I start with the 1-1 one, one point. So my 1-1 one, one point is here. When both are 1, then this is 0.75 comma 1. So 0.75 comma 1 is this point. Then 0.7 comma 0.83 is here. Similarly, I point all these values and this is my ROC curve that I get. Since this is uh, the number of values that I've used is very small, that is why it is kind of zigzagged here. You see very solid lines. But with, when it comes to hundreds and thousands of samples that we take in, then the value, the curve is pretty smooth. Now, looking at the area of curve here, I can simply find out the area under this curve. And you can see that this is my x is equal to y line. So as a threshold, generally anything above this, if I get an area more than 0.5, then my the algorithm is performing nicely. And to be able to judge between two algorithms, I have to simply find out the area of curve for both the algorithms that I take. So I'll have some another table like this. I will have another curve like this. I can find out the area very simply by just, you know, simple mathematics. I'll take these rectangles, add up the length into breadth for each and every portion. So I can break this into three rectangles here. You can see this rectangle this particular rectangle and the last rectangle here. I can simply add the values of areas of all these three rectangles and get the area of curve under this. Similarly, for the other algorithm, I can find out the area of curve for the other algorithm and compare the two to be able to find out which is performing better. So hope this clears out the numerical part. Thank you.